please take a moment to increase the brightness on your device for optimal viewing. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Sketchy Friendler, where every day I tell you a story and then draw a picture for you to go along with it. Today I'm going to tell you about a very scary experience that I had in Tijuana. But before we start, let's just go through the basics here. Yes, I'm drawing in a blue pencil. I will start drawing in a regular pencil very soon, very shortly, so bear with me. Um, two, uh, if you cannot see what I am drawing, crank, out, crank up the brightness on your viewing device as high as you can, all the way up. And then if you're on your phone and it is too small for you to see, just tilt your phone horizontal. That way the image will fill up the screen and you will be able to see the image better. And with that, let's do this. All right, so I was telling you, there was a very scary experience that I had in Tijuana. But let me give you a little backstory. So for a few years, I lived in Southern California. I am from California, but I only spent about five years in, in Southern California. Um, I had a few cousins that live in San Diego. I lived in the LA area. And um, I would go to San Diego occasionally, um, sometimes because of Comic Con, which I used to be able to get in for free, the Pro Pass, and then um, also to visit my cousins. So I'd go there a couple times a year, I would say. Um, but when I went there, I would always make a point of going to San Ysidro, which is outside of San Diego, which is also on the border of Tijuana. And I would go into Tijuana and um, go and get like, they had like 800 milligram ibuprofen and they had like over the counter antibiotics and just, just stuff that, you know, you can't get stateside and, and I just wanted to have them. I don't know if that's legal I'm making admission here. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, I would go there and I got it down to like a science. Like I could go pull into the parking parking lot on, on the San Ysidro side and then walk over the bridge into Tijuana. And I knew um, I, there was like a, there's an area called Revolucion. And there's all these stores there. And um, I would um, I would go um, to the pharmacia there. And there was one where the, this I, I knew the guy there. Well, I met him over the course of going there a few times. And he spoke perfect English and he always, and I was asking, and I asked him like, you know, how, how do you have a, you know, no accent? You, you live here. And he's like, Oh, well, I used to live in Oakland and, you know, I got some trouble happened and I, and, and you know, I, they sent me back here. I grew up in the United States, but now I, I'm here, <laughs> but I lived in the Bay area and I lived in the East Bay. So I was like, Oh, Oakland. So like, you know, we kind of hit it up. So every time I go there, I'd like, go there and go to that pharmacy and we chatted up for a bit but um anyway so when when you cross over into you, you get out of the car your car you go and you, there's like a whole like a building that leads into this bridge that's covered inside indoor kind of bridge that goes over into mexico from the united states and then you come out on the other side in, in Tijuana and you, there's a, there's a, I don't know, maybe it's a half a mile or mile of walking to Revolucion. So there's all this way and there's usually like just tons of people and you just sort of make your way through the, the crowds and it's pretty interesting. It's pretty cool. Cause there's all these, interesting little shops and there's people like hawking their goods and it's really interesting the um the actual when you cross over from the united states into mexico like you can tell like 
just how the infrastructure is like completely different. Like the the sidewalks are like kind of crumbling and it's, you definitely know you're in Mexico once you get in there. Um, even though it's just like a hop, skip and a jump right across the border, essentially. Um, so, you know, I'd always, I got it down to where I'd, I'd get in there and get out in like 45 minutes. I'd go there, walk in, go to the pharmacy in Revolucion. I'd get myself some churros on the way out and then I would head back out again. So it was just sort of like, you know, just do it, get in, get out. You really have no business being there other than getting your meds or whatever it is you, you're after. Your velvet Elvis, crying velvet Elvis paintings <laughs> or whatever it is, luchador masks. Um, anyway, so I would go and like a few times a year and the very last time I went, um, I went in and um, usually there's tons of people and like, you know, you're like, it's just crowds of people going across once you get there and um, it's pretty like interesting it's really cool you know but the last time that i went in there this is probably i'm gonna say i don't quote me on that specific year but it's some probably 2008 maybe um i went in and like there was hardly like i was like the only person pretty much walking across and then, and then I, um, I couldn't, I didn't know, you know, and then a lot of the, the stores were kind of closed up. I was like, what is going on here? Like why? Usually there's tons of people, there's tons of tourists. The only people that seem to be around are locals. And there was a couple of touristy people. And I, I was like the only other person that I could, that I saw um uh it was really weird it was kind of spooky I, I didn't understand what was going on um very uneasy like i felt like usually i felt like when i would go there i, I kind of would blend in with everybody and i mean sure i was probably the, one of the only asian people so maybe i didn't but in terms of just being a part of a crowd and just being lumped in with a bunch of just tourists entering the country. But now this time I went in, I was the only, I felt like I was the only touristy type person. And um, I felt like people were, were like staring at me like, and I'm sorry, but like in any kind of like these kind of border towns like you don't you don't want attention on you <laughs> it's just not be it from either side of the law because you don't want to just you don't want any trouble you don't want to, people to bother you you don't want to get harassed or whatever you know you just and especially when people are just kind of staring at you it's like what did i have i done something that's weird that that you know like some sort of um social cultural faux pas did i do something strange why are you all staring at me and why also am i the only person here um it was it was not a good feeling i'll tell you i didn't like it um and you can be sure that that was probably uh one of the fastest trips that I went in and out of there because I really, I think I even bypassed the churros on the way out. I was just like, get me out of here. This is not, I just don't, I just have this weird feeling that something's not right. Um, and evidently I felt, I thought like, uh, you know, maybe I, did I miss the memo? And evidently I did miss the memo because that was the weekend that I guess I hadn't been following the news 
And um, at that point, there was a lot of, there was like a gang warfare pretty much in these border towns that were was happening at that point. There's lots of problems. And um, that particular weekend was the weekend that uh, the Marines, uh, the command at Camp Pendleton, which is a big Marine base in, in um, San Diego, forbade Marines to go into Tijuana because of all this gangland warfare that was going on. So you have to think, like, let's see, if the Marines are telling their their guys, don't go here because it's too dangerous, there's probably a good reason <laughs> that they're telling their people not to go. Um, so I definitely missed that memo. And the reason that I was the only person in a usually bustling border town was because... Uh, Americans were not entering in because, you know, it was very dangerous at that point. And that was the very last time <laughs> that I went into Tijuana. Um, I, I, th I think maybe it's calmed down since then. I don't think it's as bad, but uh, you know what? Getting 800 milligrams of ibuprofen is not worth uh, my safety and well-being. So, um, yeah, that's what happened. And that's why that was, <laughs> that's why I had a very scary experience in Tijuana. It was, um, <clears throat> not something that I'll ever miss doing or going to. I've been there a number of times. I'm glad I went. I'm glad I, you know, there's a lot of cool things there. The people are pretty nice. Um, I did, I've had good experiences, and I have other stories about going down here. I have at least another good story that I'll tell later, but um, I felt like this one was a good one because it was kind of creepy, kind of exciting. Um, but uh, they make good churros there. The cool thing about the churros is they have, like, it's like a little, like, uh, it's like a cart, right? And it's got this basically a deep fryer that's built into the cart and then there's like a little like tube in the top with uh with a steering wheel that they turn and it like shoots out the um the little churro dough into the deep fryer so you get these little churros that come out and then give you a bag of churros good if you ever are in tijuana i recommend <laughs> um so Yes, that's my story. It's my little memory of Tijuana and why I don't go there anymore. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Uh, just a little reminder, I uh, do this Monday through Friday. I took a little break. Apologies for that, but I am back. Uh, I do this Monday through Friday and um, on YouTube and Facebook and then um, I do short form videos on TikTok, different videos. They're about two and a half minutes long, go all the way up into the inking process. Um, and then on Instagram, I um, post the finished drawings from the previous day. So if you're interested, I'm on all four platforms, Monday through Friday, I'm doing these drawings and then on Saturday we post a poll for you to pick your favorite drawing and then after that whichever drawing wins on that Sunday I go live on YouTube and Facebook where I um, finish inking and coloring the drawing and I talk to you guys and we uh, we all uh, my wife and I will just get on there and chat about what's going on while I'm drawing and you can ask me questions or just talk to me talk to my wife and I and uh, that's what we do all right thank you so much for hanging out I appreciate you as always I am back like I said um, and uh, 
I will see you next time. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye.